Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. We're going to start in a few minutes. Please, please confirm if you can that you can hear me. Hi, Veronica. I'm just checking the Twitch uh, channel to see if, if everything is OK. Veronica, I can see you in the chat, so that's fine. Okay, we're going to start. It's uh, 3 p.m. Welcome and Happy New Year. Um, so today, as every Wednesday at 3 p.m., we're going to work on a topic in data science and for the moment we are in the middle of a long series of sessions where uh, where I code a plugin for Gephi. So Gephi is this uh, very popular um, desktop software for the visualization of networks at scale. It can uh, help you visualize and explore networks that are big uh, as big as um, you know several dozen thousands of nodes, and it provides a lot of uh, convenient features to find insightful information in your networks. So um, this software can be extended with new features if you develop them, if you program them, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm developing a plugin that uh, takes the nodes of your of your network or the graph, and uh, with these nodes, uh, you can select an attribute of them. So you know a node can be described with attributes uh, like the age of a person or the address or their Preference, preferences and tastes, tastes, whatever, if, if the node is made of persons. And anyway, these attributes are made of text, right? The, like letters. Uh, so the goal of the plugin is to, to show you in Gephi the most frequent words 
that are mentioned in the attributes of these nodes. Why is it useful? It's because it can help you at a glance. It can help you understand what are these nodes about. So if you have a network of dozens of thousands of persons, and you select a community of 1,000 persons, you might wonder, you know, wha what, what is this community about? Uh, this plugin is going to help you see immediately that many of these persons share, um, you know, a word in common um, because they have the same profession, because they have the same geographical location, whatever. Uh, in their textual attributes, they will share some words. And so if we show these words, then as an analyst, uh, well, you immediately get a sense of what this community, community is about. So uh, to do this, to write this plugin, uh, we went through a couple of very difficult steps where we had to set up the, you know, the the environment for, for the plugin, but we are past that. And let me show you now. Um, now where we are is that we are coding in a file, in a Java file, a, 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 a kind of toy example. So we basically opened a graph and I realized Uh, do I have a graph with a textual attribute? I think so, but uh, I'm not even sure. So we, in this file, we open a graph and we read a textual attribute, and that's basically where we are. Today we're gonna we're gonna rank the most frequent terms in these attributes. Let's do that. That's my file explorer. Uh, NetBeans is already opened. Let me. So NetBeans is the uh, you know the software we use to code the plugin. Oops. And I I can't really. I would like to put it on the screen so that you can see it. I think it's going to work. Ooh, where is it? Yeah, great. Now you should see it. OK, so what we have is, uh, let me see if I look there. Yeah, fine. So what we have here is the code of the plugin. Uh, let me we trace our steps a bit. So we have first the kind of parent directory that contains all the plugins, aka modules, that we develop. And we develop just one module or one plugin. I called it the Lexical Explorer plugin. You know, that's what it's going to do. And when you double click on this plugin, it opens it right below the Lexical Explorer plugin, right? We will not need the parent folder or the parent project uh, that often, I think. So we're going to just work there. So I open it by double clicking on it. You see a lot of directories. Um, most of them are not important. The source is where the code is going to be written. So I click on it. Uh, we have two files at the moment. The first one is the window, the panel that's going to be visible in Giphy. And this one, this file, is the one I discussed just before. Like, you know, it's a kind of sandbox where we're going to write our code and when we are happy with it we're going to integrate this code with the panel right above but at the moment we are just working on the logic of the of the code in this kind of sandbox example so i told you all the other uh, 
folders are not that interesting except for this one project files inside you have a pom file in java a, uh, in java the pom.xml file is where you find the configuration uh, of your project so it, it has it contains a lot of uh, relevant information that's the one we see here at the moment right um, so this is where you see the name of the parent uh, folder you know the one that I mentioned there uh, a kind of ID of the plugin the name and very importantly the list of the dependencies so the order bits of codes that you need to import in your project so that it runs and you have quite a long list and that's basically it okay so let's jump to the file we were uh, working on last time which is the uh, the sandbox where we so I just double click on it the file where we import a toy network and we read well I will not redo every not re-explain everything basically basically where we were was the bottom yeah so we do you see it perfect maybe a bit more so we iterate iterate through the nodes of the network for each node we capture its this its attribute which is called description if the attribute is not null or is not blank, we add it to a list of descriptions. So this list is there. And once we have the list of all the descriptions, we, we use a library that I have developed for other uh, NLP projects. We use a library to tokenize each description. So that's what you see here. Enter. Yeah, kind of. Uh, maybe I can do something a bit more useful here. Yeah, that's better. So we tokenize each description, you know, each text of each node, and the result is a list of text fragments. A text fragment can be a word, an emoji, a punctuation sign, a blank space. So what we do is we don't really care about uh, white spaces and punctuation signs. So that's what it says there. If the fragment is not, you know, that's the unequal sign. If the text fragment is not a white space and is not a punctuation sign or you don't see it but that's a punctuation at the, the very f well you don't see it here but never mind well I could just uh, yeah if the text if the fragment is not a white space and is not a punctuation sign then add it to the list of text fragments that we're gonna explore further and that's where we were um, so I, I realize I didn't put comments, which could be useful to understand what, what is going on. So I'm just going to write a comment there. We loop through the list of textual descriptions and extract and tokenize them. Well, I could be fancy and put some long comment. I mm, don't do that often in Java to, to have a long comment over several lines. You do as I just did here. The result
is a list of text fragment objects we keep only the text fragments that are not punctuation signs nor white spaces so that's what we did here okay so that's really where the fun parts uh, part starts we want now to maybe count you know them count these text fragments and make sure that they we want to know which one are the most frequent basically so in order to do that uh, we can use you know uh, what is called in java a multi-set so de depending on your programming language uh, of choice uh, you have different data structures that help you store a collection of items in useful ways you, in java and again you have the same in python and everywhere you can store stuff i would say in three dif three major classic uh, collections you can store things in lists sets and maps uh, what we're going to use here is a kind of set that so a set is a collection of items where each item is uh, is is in the set just once you know you have just a collection of elements and an element can appear just once in a set uh, a multi set is a set but it keeps track of uh, the number of occurrences of each element so that's useful for us we want to have a collection of text fragments unique text fragments but even if they are unique we want to know how many of them they are i'm not sure it's super clear but uh, believe me it's super uh, convenient um, so usually when you need a, a set, uh, sorry, a multi-set in Java, uh, you, you don't have that natively in Java. You rely on a third-party library developed by Google, which is called Guava, which has a multi-set. I used to do that, but then I realized I was importing this big library just to use the multi-set in it. So in the end, I just developed my own version of the multiset which is super small and that way i don't have to uh, import the big guava library so let's import this multiset from my own personal library um, so again to import a library you go to the pump file you know the file which is there uh, I can't remember, maybe I already imported it for some for a different need. No, I have not imported it yet. So this library of mine is on GitHub, but it's not released. So it's public, right? But it's uh, what I mean is not it's not released as uh, something I can directly import in my pump file. So I'm gonna do it manually. I'm gonna open the the project locally on my computer it's called utils not super original but uh, utils from Clément de Valois and once I have opened this project locally in NetBeans then I can come back to the POM file of my plugin so that's what I'm doing now and I think I can do not the pump file actually. I can go on dependencies, right click, add dependency, and that's the key stuff here. I can add the dependency I need, which is in one of the open projects in NetBeans. So I just click there, and yes, it appears there. So I'm just going to click on 
add, I suppose. And it should hopefully be added to my PAM file. Yeah, it's there, do you see it? Yeah. So with this library, I can now come back to my network importer file where we were before. And I'm going to, you, you know, I'm going to uh, use the multiset. And actually, I'm going to use it right from before. I'm not going to do a list of text fragments. I'm going to do a, oops, I'm going to do a multiset of text fragments. Right? I suppose I can do that. Yeah. So not a list, but a multiset. New multiset. Right, so of course it tells me that it doesn't know what it is. But I just do that. And it says add import from this library. And still not happy with it. Oh, come on. What's the issue here? Text fragments is not a comparable. It should be a comparable. OK, so I think I need to open. I need to open my. I see the problem. The problem is that the text fragment, as I have defined it in my NLP library, is not a comparable. And you need it to be comparable the text fragments need to be comparable with each other so that uh, they can be added to the multiset. So it's a bit uh, complex, but, but hopefully I can fix that just by going to the place where the text fragment is defined, which is there. So the text fragment is defined there. And I... I'm not sure it's even correct. So the text fragment implements comparable. And does it fix the issue here? That's a bit more complicated than what I thought. I need to, well, that's quite boring, but I need to, to use the multiset that I created. I need to 
I mean, the elements in the multiset should be comparable with each other, and that's not the case. Uh, the text fragment class that I have defined is not comparable, so I need uh, to go back to the definition of a text fragment and make it comparable. Uh, I'm not super experienced in that, so I'm going to Google that. I'm going to show you the result of my Google search. Just want a very oh, come on. I just want a very simple comparison method. Okay, that's not super trivial, but I uh, wonder if I can, if NetBeans can help me there. Maybe it can help me. Let's think. I think I have a super idea. Let's. Where was I in gram, right? Maybe if I put this method in the text fragment class, things should be better. Complain everywhere. No, it doesn't. Super. So a text fragment should be comparable with another text fragment. How do I know that two text fragments are equal? So the whole point is that why do we need to compare stuff? In a set, I say that a set is made of elements that are all distinct. Uh, so the program should know how to define you know, what are two distinct elements. And, and that's where we tell it. Uh, so in this case, two text fragments are going to be distinct if they don't have the same cardinal index. Very simple. Uh, maybe not just that. They need to have the same cardinal index and the same original form. OK, so if this if the text fragment has the same position in the sentence as the other one oops 
So I compare this text fragment to another one. If they have the same cardinal index in the sentence and they have the same text, then then they are equal and I don't know how to say equal yes that's zero so zero means equ equality else so I can return anything that is not zero. I'm just going to return minus one. Oops. So hopefully we have defined a comparison uh, method here for two text fragments, which is going to enable us to add the text fragments to the multiset, which gonna enable us to count these uh, text fragments. Uh, there would be other methods to do it, which would be much simpler than everything I just did, but, but that's the way I do it. So does it work first? Okay, so back to here. Okay, still not happy. Eh, yeah, it's happy, it has disappeared, it works. Oh, and by the way, do you see the all the ugly, you know, the ugly warning signs there? It tells us package from transitive module dependency declare a direct dependency to fix. So basically what why is it saying what is it saying is that we use nodes and node iterable and column and all these things we don't have, we have not declared in our dependencies. If we look at the pump file, we don't have the dependency that defines all these things. So why is it still imported with just warning signs? It's because these objects are defined in a library which depends from a library we have imported. So it is indirectly imported. But it tells us that we should import it directly. So what that's what I'm going to do now. I go back to the pump file and I just remember it uh, by heart. It's basically this dependency that contains the objects we use. It's the graph API or the graph store, but I think it's the graph API. Maybe the graph store, but and when we are back there, I suppose the, all these warning signs are going to disappear. Yeah, exactly, because now we have a direct a dependency. Anyway, that's the cool stuff. What time is it? Yeah, it's, it's pretty okay. Uh, so what I did is. Uh, yeah, replace the list by the multiset. So now the multiset, when we add the text fragment to the multiset, the method to add it is not added, add one, as far as I remember. Yeah, add one. And number of text fragments in this description, I suppose not size, but get size. Why did we do that? Just because now we can do something fancy like so. Okay, so I'm gonna do it text fragments. So that's our multiset. And there is one method that is super convenient in it. Well, let me show you. There is one method to rank or yeah, to rank or to order the multiset, I suppose, right? Sort, yeah, that's this one. 
sort ascending, no, sort descending. Oh, by the way, that's super stupid, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, sort descending. Yeah, my, um, it's a bit uh, stupid, but it works. Uh, multi so we have all our text fragments, but this time they are listed from the one which is the most frequent to the least frequent. Multiset uh, ranked from top frequency. And we can now print the, let's say, the the yeah the 10 first most frequent terms hmm. is it gonna work I don't think so. Print top term. Appearing so just for the first ten terms, let's say. So it's just a simple instruction to say it should stop if we have more than 10 terms. So maybe we can just launch the thing now. Um, it's not going to work. Uh, we're going to see why. So that's the console at the bottom. Let's read it together while the program runs. what I thought. So why is it, why the, is the top term appearing just once? Hey, it's because it's because I have, that's really interesting, it's because I have defined a term as a combination of a word and a position in a description. And of course, uh, it would be super unlikely that the same term appears exactly at the same position in two attributes of the nodes. So I realized that I did something pretty not clever, which is that I don't need to put the where was it? Yeah. So as you see, I stored the text fragments in the multiset, but actually I could just store the string, you know, not the full text fragment with all the information about the position in this description and is it a word, whatever. I can just store the string into it. So in this case, it's gonna be, I would expect it to be so I call it original form, this, the, uh, the text of a text, the, yeah, the string of a text fragment. So hopefully we're going to be, why, oh yeah, of course. 
So now we have just a string. Yeah, that should. So I don't know. Maybe it's. I. I would think it would work, but you know, with this thing, it's always a surprise. Yeah, baby. Great. Great. It worked. So, <laughs> so no surprise. Uh, if you if you do a bit of text analysis, you are not surprised by, by what we see. Stop words. You know, the most common terms are the ones that are completely non-informative. Uh, but the good news is that I have a library for that. Uh, so we need first to remove um, the stop words. Yeah, it's super easy. So we're going to do it there. Uh, pop, 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 pop. So I need to import a library for that. It's. I mean, it's always super small libraries, right? It's not like, that's why I developed them myself. It's because I, I really appreciate the lightweight uh, solutions. So it's called Emigo stop words, I hope. Yeah, got it. And we have stop words now. So we can go back to our little problem here. So we want a text fragment only if it's not a white space, if it's not a punctuation sign, and if it's not a stop word. So again, I call it original form, the, the text of the text fragment, uh, because you, know, you can modify the form of a text fragment. You can basically uh, remove accents, remove caps and stuff. So the original row, you know, original version of the text fragment before all these modifications I didn't call it text, I called it original form, and I understand it's not that clear, but uh, well, it works. Uh, so how do you call uh, stop words? I can't remember. I'm going to open the library and see into it. Yeah, I'm going to open the library. I hope I have an example of how to call stop words in it. OK, it's not complicated at all. Uh, right. No, not. Stop words remover. Yeah, I think it's this one. OK, stop words remover. Why not? So back to here. So I, in I, I initialize the stop word remover before looping. So 
So, and it gives me the option to, you know, should I remove all the words bef that are smaller than three characters, and I'm three, two, four, whatever characters, and I'm saying yes. And the language is English, but you know, uh, not exactly sure. We have just English languages in the network. So you see, I can import the stop words remover because I just added it as a, as a dependency in the pom file. Why does it complain? Oh, yeah. Very innocuous. Stop words remover, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to act on stop words in English. And one of the methods is, should it be removed? I really like this one. So should it be removed is a yes or no, right? Why does it complain? Oh, because there is one missing parenthesis. Uh, so it should not be removed. So if the text fragment is not a white space, is not a punctuation, and should not be removed, then add it to the list. So if you are curious about the, well, should it be removed? What does it do? Oh yeah, it's a complex, it's an interesting function because it takes into account um, n-grams. But we don't have n-grams there, so that's for another time. But we are ready to handle n-grams. OK, let's run again our program, and hopefully the stop words will be removed. Checking the time. Oh, yeah. <sighs> okay, it has removed the terms in en the stop words in English, but you see that you have stop words, I suppose, in Spanish, that uh, because the, 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 the social network includes actors that have their bios in English and others in Spanish. Well, but, uh, why is it just one character long? Yeah, okay. So maybe I should add a condition about the length of the characters, uh, the length of the words. So at least, you know, the terms should be at least a couple of characters long. Otherwise, we're going to remove them. So let's do that. So the this length of the word should be at least uh, above uh, five. Let's uh, above four. Let's say yeah. And we run again. But ow. Before I do that, I would like to remove the stop words in Spanish too because uh, because it seems we're gonna need it. So English, Spanish. Okay.
better. Great, even super. Yeah, so you know, I without without no. Oh, you don't see it. Sorry. Uh, how should I? Wait, wait, wait. Not super. Let me do that well. Yeah, that's this one. So these are the top terms. Mundo, periodista, follow, football, journalist, football, sports, Instagram account, social inter sports. So without knowing anything about the network and their nodes, we know there is something to do with journalists and football. Uh, and given that the example we took is from the, uh, you know, I just typed in Twitter Qatar, uh, Qatar, and it was during the World Cup, uh, the top words do reflect the, the identity of the members of the network. So maybe it's almost time to recap. So let me do that. Let's do a quick recap of what we did. Um, so we keep only the text fragments that are not punctuation signs, nor white spaces, but we also removing terms that are stop words in English or Spanish. And the interesting thing is that, of course, maybe you guessed it, but the, you know, the users they're gonna have networks in plenty of different languages. So we should add a parameter in the panel in Gephi to, to make them choose the, the languages that they would like to, you know, the languages that their network is uh, from, so to speak. Uh, so if they are analyzing a social network and they know that the text is going to be in English. They should just, in a drop-down menu, choose English. Uh, and we maybe we should also add an option that would say all languages. Yeah, maybe that's a good one too. It will remove the stop words from all languages. Uh, it's going to be a bit too brutal because some stop words in one language are non not a stop word in another language, but. Uh, it should still be super convenient. Uh, uh, we removed also, also removing terms that are small words. And what else did we do? That's it, right? So the result, and what we did also is the result is not a list. The result is a multi-set. of text fragments. And what we did then is, once we have this multiset, now we order or we rank the multiset by the frequency of the terms in it. So that's a single line that does that, it's super nice. And then I was just and and for the for debugging as we just did for debugging uh, we print the top ten uh, words in the multiset in the ranked multiset and as you have seen with me it it works. 
Okay, so maybe we should stop there uh, and just to keep five minutes and think of the next steps. I think the next step would be to uh, to work on the UI. So that what we have done here, we would have it in a panel in Giphy. So we have the panel, it's completely empty at the moment, but you know, in the previous sessions, we worked at having the uh, panel of a plugin displayed. So we have that, it's just empty at the moment. What we could do next time is basically merging what we just did here in the logic of the panel so that a user who would just uh, explore a network, they would just use a drop down menu to choose which attribute do I want to explore, which language do I want to, you know, what is the language of my network, so to speak, and then run, and it would just show the top terms of the network. It's not the end at all because, as you guess, we it's not it, that would not be that would be interesting, but not uh, fabulous. That would be a start. Uh, so that's what we could try to do next week already. I'm sure we will not finish next week, but then we will iterate. Once we have this basic working version, we're going to improve on it in the next times. We're going to introduce engrams, which are you know interesting things to a bit more precise than just words. We're going to introduce engrams, and then we're going to introduce a logic where, and that would be super nice, where the user can choose to basically see the top terms, not of the whole network, but only from the selection, from the current selection of the nodes they are making on the network. Uh, let me sh let me show you what I mean by that, and we're gonna conclude on that. So I'm gonna open Giphy. I hope it's not gonna take ages. Come on, Giffy. Maybe I should close uh, NetBeans. Well, maybe not. Giffy is almost there. Yeah. So sh showing you Net. Uh, Giphy. I'm going to use Les Miserables as the usual. Okay. So my my uh, my goal is that in such a panel on the left, you would have the list of the top terms for the whole network. Uh, but if the user would just click on the tick box there, it would shift the logic and now the top terms would be the ones only from the region being currently selected. So how do you select a region in uh, Gephi? You do it there. You uh, Well, maybe even there, I suppose, there. You click on direct selection and then configure and you increase the diameter. Oh, that's a huge diameter. Let's, yeah. So now you have a selection mechanism, which is, uh, which is big, but not too big. And so what I would like is that when the user does that, so covering only a, a small region of the network, 
what you would see here would be the top terms only from the region being covered by the selection of the mouse. That would be great, right? Because then suddenly it would give you a, yeah, a summary, a quick summary of you know, who are these guys. And you would do that and, and the list would refresh, you know, the list of the terms there would immediately refresh because the nodes here might have different textual attributes than the ones there. Uh, so I like it a lot in terms uh, you know, hopefully that's going to be insightful, but it's going to also be super fun to code because it's, it's kind of a, a challenge. Um, because in terms of, you know, processing text at, as, at, a, at a snap, somebody doing that, as you guess, will completely over, overload the, the computer because each time you move the mouse, the 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 list of nodes are is changing and so the textual attributes to the textual attributes to analyze are changing as well so i suppose we're going to introduce a lag a system to you know uh, um, if somebody does that it will never ref never refresh it's going to it's going to refresh when the when there is a pause in the list of words uh, in the list of nodes being selected yeah i suppose it's going to be super interesting well let me know what you think about these plans but i think we are on the right uh, path um, next time we're gonna again uh, do the first small step of uh, working on the UI, the user interface, uh, so that the small steps we, ha steps we have made can be tried out uh, with a cl click and point uh, fashion, not just in code. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Veronica, for uh, being here. Uh, it helps a lot. Uh, it's, it helps a lot knowing that uh, I'm not just, uh, you know, speaking in an empty space. Let me check on Twitch if there is anyone else connected because I, I don't keep the window open because that would uh, distract me. Okay, just one uh, viewer. So thanks Veronica. Have a good day. Bye-bye.